Gold and silver are both referenced over 700 times in the Bible. The historical significance of gold and silver is extremely fascinating. It's quite literally God's money. In ancient biblical times, silver was perceived as a magical metal since it could purify water, keep milk fresh longer, and responds to other elements like no other metal, and that's not even acknowledging the many uses of silver in the medical world, since silver has antimicrobial properties, large one being colloidal silver. Silver is the most highly conductive metal for thermal conductivity, electricity, and light sensitivity. These two elements on the periodic table paved the way for mankind, and the religious importance of these two metals goes highly unrecognized. So sit back, relax, and listen to the extremely interesting stories of gold and silver in the Bible. This week's gold and silver specials at Miles Franklin are the one ounce silver Philharmonics, only 315 over spot. Also, the beautiful $10 gold Liberties, only $99 over melt. And last but not least, the $20 gold Liberties, $144 over melt. That's not all, though, folks. We have 100 ounce bars as low as $1.79 over spot. Seriously, the largest inventory I've ever seen. Honored to be able to give you guys this upper. Opportunity. Slayer at milesfranklin.com. Hit me up. Welcome back, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. Unfortunately, videos like this never get many views. People want to see the newest and most controversial silver news. But videos like this are extremely important and fascinating. So make sure you please like the video, comment, share it, and watch all the way through, especially because we'll be diving into some incredibly cool stuff that I dug up. But also audience retention, the watch time, makes a huge difference. So if you watch all the way through, it will also help push this in YouTube's algorithm. So thank you guys for supporting the channel and this video. I wanted to take things a step further beyond just sharing this article. Yes, I could have made a video out of this article alone, but I wanted to do something else. For the latter half of this video, I also wanted to talk about every single Bible verse, 46 of them that mention gold and silver. Now, I'm not a religious person, I'm spiritual, but I still think this is all fascinating. I love the history of silver, and I'm sure a lot of you will enjoy this as well. So with that said, let's jump into this article talking about gold and silver in the Bible. Remember folks, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this and make sure to stick through when we go over the 46 Bible verses that also mention gold and silver. And uh, yeah, I'm going to try to stick to the script. I'll branch off occasionally if I see something that sticks out that I want to add to, but I'll mainly just be sharing this wealth of information. So with that said, Let's talk about it. I will also link this article in the description. The Bible features more than 700 references to gold and silver, emphasizing their timeless significance. The term gold alone appears in 47 of the 66 books of the Bible. Beyond their current cultural relevance, these precious metals play a crucial role in scripture, highlighting three key attributes, their divine origin, intrinsic value, and monetary quality. I like the first part of their divine origin. Gold and silver wasn't made in the Earth's crust. This stuff comes here from asteroids and meteorites and comets. So people, I, I don't think people know that. I think people who mention silver's scarcity or the role silver plays in technology and trying to find more, there's only so much silver in the Earth's crust, and it's actually very shallow, so a lot of the silver that we dig out is going to be thrown away, never to be recycled, and it's not like we could just find more or make more. It's, it's a pretty big situation when diving into the supply deficits and those fundamentals, but that, I just wanted to add that in there. It, it comes here from asteroids and meteorites. Same with gold. And please also remember, I'm spiritual, not religious, though I do relate to a lot of the same principles, but I'm probably going to mispronounce a lot of these words, so please respectfully bear with me. I think of myself as a fairly good reader that can pronounce a lot of words, but some of this stuff uh, I'm going to mispronounce. So, uh, and I quote, and this is coming from gold having its origin in the beginning of creation rooted in the Edenic vision. 
Genesis 2, 10, 12a says, and I quote, And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted, and became into four heads. The name of the first Pison, that is which compesseth of whole land of Havilah, is there of where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. There is delium in the onyx stone. The Lord even claims his sovereign ownership. Haggai 2.8 states, The silver is mine and the gold is mine. <laughs> I like that. Intrinsic value. Silver has value within itself, right? No matter who says that one ounce coin is worth what is irrelevant because the silver, uh, the silver's value is the one ounce inside of it, not the spot price, not the price tag attached to it. You can't really say that with anything else. I like this. God is the one who esteems value. He does this with mankind itself who bears the image of God. Similar to how God ascribes value to humanity, he is one who establishes value to all of his creation, including gold. And this is interesting because we all know that silver is literally used to make the world go round. If you think about global warming or climate change, silver is what is used in all of the components, whether it's PV cells, photovoltaic cells, which are used in solar panels, or EVs, electric vehicles. I mean, there's so many uses for silver, and without silver, none of these things would be possible. I just thought that was pretty interesting. So, uh, interestingly, Genesis 2.10-12 marks the first instance in Scripture where, apart from the creation of light and earth itself, God designates a non-living thing as good. Standing out amidst other elements mentioned, such as land of Havilah, the Ionic Stone, Delium, or the rivers, all are which eclipsed by the divine acknowledgement of the inherent goodness of gold. That's pretty interesting. With distinct qualities, gold and silver not only have withstand fire, or not only withstand fire, but also symbolize enduring value through the process of refinement. Intrinsically valuable with enduring beauty, these metals are designed never to tarnish or corrode. Gold's malleability allows it to be hammered thinly covering a hundred square feet area with a single ounce. That is incredible. I actually didn't know that. I actually know that scientists discovered ways to use um, silver nanoparticles to make it uh, stretch longer and used more, but I didn't know that it could cover 100 square feet with a single ounce. I don't know if the same follows with silver, but that's interesting. A phenomenon uh, which silver they go into is a phenomenal conductor of heat and electricity and reflects light superbly. And that's the part a lot of people don't say. They say um, the most uh, highly conductive metal for thermal conductivity and electricity, but a lot of people don't ever mention light sensitivity, resembling a perfect mirror when fully refined. They serve as a precedent for comparing and illustrating deep spiritual truths. This concept is exemplified in 1 Corinthians 3, 12, 13. I also want to mention if any of you have anything to branch off of or want to share any stories or any uh, knowledge or insight, please do in the comment section. I would love to hear it. And you guys could have com uh, conversations within yourselves as well. Just please be respectful, especially on a video like this. I mean, it should be at all times, but especially this video. So, and I quote, now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try even man's work of what, is, of what sort it is. In this passage, Paul highlights gold and silver's ability to withstand fire. Precious metals are not only unharmed when tried by fire, but they become refined and pure. This verse is a powerful comparison between a man's good uh, man's good work on the foundation of Christ and the qualities of gold and silver. I like that. Um, so this one's uh, pretty interesting. This is probably one of the most famous, uh, talking about the Ark of the Covenant. And thou shalt overlay it, Ark of the Covenant, with pure gold within and without shalt thou overlay it and shalt make upon it a crown of gold round about. And... Uh, I'm curious, what is your, I guess we could talk about that when we go into the site. I was going to say, what is your favorite Bible verse that mentions gold or silver? Um, but I guess the second part, which mentions all of them, 
would be a better time to ask that. But, and I quote, And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and mirror. Matthew 2, 11. Monetary quality. In ancient times, gold and silver were synonymous with money. And in the Bible, every reference, reference to money pertains to a unit of weight in these precious metals. Regardless of geographical location, gold and silver were universally recognized and valued as wealth. The removal of gold and silver from the monetary system in the last century isn't criticized enough for causing economic imbalances. Central banks are the means of manipulating currencies and creating artificial wealth, resulting in disparities between the rich and the poor. In contrast, Bible emphasizes God's disdain for the deceit and manipulation found in counterfeit money like the Federal Reserve Note, championing balance and justice found in what serves as stable money. I like that, and that's a good point, and they even show the verse. Um, and that's, you know, thinking about the gold and silver standard or getting rid of it and then what's happening right now, especially with inflation, yet alone hyperinflation. But then I could also argue that with uh, some states now bringing back the gold standard to some degree, acknowledging silver as money to even pay off debt. So maybe we're making a step forwards. Who knows? Uh, that's a whole separate video. In contrast, the Bible emphasizes God's disdain for the deceit and manipulation and counterfeit money. So... Proverbs 11.1 1 states, A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. I like that. Weight. Like I said, an ounce of silver always has an ounce of silver in it, no matter who says that ounce is worth what. Because the value is the one ounce inside of it. And that reinfor uh, reinforces the sentiment asserting a just weight and balance are the Lord's weights. All weights of the bag are his work. So, um, in summary, gold and silver embody enduring value within divine origin, intrinsic worth, and monetary significance, highlighted as creations of God in Genesis and proclaimed his possessions in Haggai. These metals serve as spiritual benchmarks representing both value and symbolic connections as seen in passages like 1 Corinthians. The exclusion of gold and silver from the global monetary standard in the last century created a systemic crack in the economic foundation. This shift has resulted in substantial monetary imbalances with central banks manipulating currencies leading to unnecessary disparities, false booms, and dishonest credit. The scriptures condemn deceit and manipulation, affirming God's intentional design for gold and silver as stabilizing forces and genuine measures of earthly value crucial for ensuring proper long-term wealth preservation and growth. Wow, that was beautiful. That was, that was a beautiful, that, that was a beautiful paragraph. Wow. That is that was beautiful. So I'm thinking of just picking some of these because there is a lot, but I will this is openbible.info and then you could just type in it as it says what does the Bible say about and you could just type in the word. Um, so I'll cover some of these. Ezekiel 28:4 by your wisdom and your understanding you have made wealth for yourself and have gathered gold and silver into your treasuries. Um, for the love of, and this is Tim, uh, 1 Timothy 6.10, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. It, it is through this craving that some have wandered away from faith and, uh, and pierced themselves with many pangs. Um, so uh, Matthew 10.9, acquire no gold or silver or copper for your belts. Um... 1 Corinthians 3.12, now if anyone builds on foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Ooh, I like this one, Proverbs 22.7, the rich rules over the poor and the borrower is the slave of the lender. Wow. Matthew 6.19, do not lay up yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Acts 20, 33, I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. Um, take my instructions instead of silver and acknowledge rather than choice gold. Um, I'm trying to look for more. Um, some of these don't even mention gold in them. 
which is interesting. I mean, they do have to do with, I guess, finance to some extent. Okay, so Genesis 2.11, the name of the first is Pison. It is the one that flowed around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. Um, so, yeah. Um, trying to look for more. Oh, this one, Genesis 24, 22. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took a gold ring weighing half a shekel, two bracelets for her arms weighing 10 gold shekels. So, oh, I like this one, Isaiah 65. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. So, yeah, that's some of them, but um, you, you guys know you could keep moving on. You, you guys can, you know, keep doing more research. I just wanted to highlight this topic and the significance and importance of gold and silver throughout history. If you guys like videos like this, then make sure to like and comment and share it and watch all the way through because videos like this usually don't, and I'm saying never, get as many views as the videos of the newest, most controversial silver drama. And I think that's kind of sad because I love making videos like this. And I guess I shouldn't be making videos strictly what gets the most views. But, um, you know, that's kind of how, you know, if some, a video gets more views, that means more people enjoy watching that. If I make this video, it gets 1,000 views, but I can make another video and get 20,000 views, then, of course, I'm going to be uh, making content towards what the majority of my audience wants to see. But sometimes maybe this just is, doesn't get pushed in the YouTube algorithm or it just shouldn't even, or I just make videos that I like. I used to make a lot of videos in person showing my coins and my stack and stuff, but those videos don't get many views. Seems like you guys are more interested in silver news, not silver um, education, but the education part is some of my favorite. Um, the history of silver, the gold to silver ratio or the historic gold to silver ratio or silver's role, you know, that stuff I love talking about and sharing and teaching and educating. Um, so yeah, just let me know what you guys think about this. Make sure to subscribe and um, make sure to stick around because I got some more content coming soon. Thanks for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.